Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching the Today I Found Her YouTube channel. And in the video today, we're answering a viewer question. Kelly M asks, is a guy's hand or foot size actually a good indicator of the length of their penis, or is that just a myth? Given the public nudity is generally considered unacceptable in most of the modern world, and if you're wondering, do see our video on when did humans start wearing clothes for more on that subject, people have long tried to come up with other potential indicators to determine the size of a guy's manhood without actually seeing it. A seemingly tried and true method for doing this is just to look at the size of the man's hands or their feet. But does hand and foot size actually correlate to the length of the penis? The short answer is no. It doesn't. Studies have consistently shown that the size of a guy's feet or the overall size of their hands is not related to their members' erect measurements. However, a man's fingers do give a strong clue as to their probable penis size, but the overall length of the fingers is not what's important here. For instance, a study published by the Asian Journal of Andrology in 2011 found that the ratio between the second and fourth digits on the hand strongly correlates with the overall length of an individual's penis. Specifically, Dr. Ho Choi et al. state, Univariate and multivariate analysis using linear regression models showed that only digit ratio was a significant predictive factor for stretched penile length. In a nutshell, the lower the ratio, how much shorter the index finger is than the ring finger, the longer the penis would probably be when erect. And if you're wondering, flaccid penis length is not an accurate predictor of erect penis length. More specifically, you can calculate your ratio by taking the length of your index finger, measured from the crease where it meets your hand to the tip, and divide it by the length of your ring finger. The shorter your index finger is compared to the ring finger, the lower the ratio will be, and if you're a man, the longer your penis probably is. Though, of course, there are exceptions, as with everything. So, does the ratio of the index and ring finger lengths correlate to erect penis length? Well, in the beginning, female and male genitals are pretty much the same. This is because they develop from the same cluster of tissues called gonads. In males, somewhere around seven to nine weeks of gestation, the gonads begin secreting two hormones. The first is anti-mullerian hormone, AMH, and testosterone. AMH prevents the development of the ducts that eventually turn into the fallopian tubes, the uterus, and the upper vagina. Once the gonads begin secreting testosterone, some of it, around five to 10%, gets transformed into another hormone called dihydrotestosterone. Both testosterone and dihydrotestosterone will attach to androgen receptors, which affect the growth and development of many different human body systems. Notable here, dihydrotestosterone attaches to androgenin receptors on tissues that eventually develop and combine into the penis and scrotum. Lower levels of this within the womb or later during puberty may result in underdeveloped or a malformed penis. So to sum it up here, penile growth in the womb is stimulated and affected by testosterone testosterone, dihydrotestosterone, and androgen receptors. Circulating amounts of the two hormones combined with the associated androgen receptor stimulation will determine penis size. So now what about the fingers? Circulating testosterone in the womb will affect other body parts as well. Pertinent to the topic at hand, this includes the ratio between the second and fourth digits, the index and ring fingers. So why does testosterone affect different digits differently? For that, we'll have to get a little more technical, but essentially the activity mediated by androgen receptors and estrogen receptor A is higher in your ring finger compared to your index finger. This is regulated by the structure of genes controlling the process for the bone growth of your fingers called endochondral ossification. The spread of chondrocytes will determine the length of your finger, and this expansion is higher in the ring finger compared to the index finger. When you decrease the activation of androgen receptors during the narrow window of digit development, usually completed by week 13 of gestation, you will decrease the length of your ring finger. This activation is attributed to the amount of testosterone and DHT circulating through the tiny fetus. Conversely, if you decrease the activity of the receptor estrogen A, the ones being stimulated more when you're female, you will get a longer ring finger. Based on this physiology, it has been long known that you can predict prenatal hormone exposure based on the ratio of these two fingers. Since both penile length and the ratio of ring and index finger is basically a result of the amount of testosterone and DHT circulating in utero, there is a correlation between that ratio and the length of a man's favorite appendage. 
So, as you might have guessed from all of this, the ratio between the length of one's index and ring fingers is usually quite different in men and women. Men tend to have shorter index fingers than ring fingers. Women tend to have their index fingers either the same length or longer than their ring fingers. And now for a bonus fact. Penile length isn't the only thing digit ratio can somewhat predict. Since testosterone and DHT control the development of several body systems and processes, digit ratio can be a predictor of a wide range of physiological and psychological conditions. These include things like athletic ability, sexual orientation, fertility, and some sex-based ailments such as prostate and uterine problems. Lower digit ratios tend to occur in those with more aggressive behaviors, and those with them are less likely to suffer from eating disorders disorders. People with higher digit ratios tend to be more agreeable. Studies have also indicated that straight women and gay men who have higher ratios tend to prefer partners who are more masculine. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. I'd also like to take the time to quickly mention a new channel that is being done by a regular writer for us here at Today I Found Out. His name is Carl Smallwood. I hope that Carl appreciates the fact that I chose this particular article, given his surname. The channel is called Fact Fiends, and you can find this, there's a link to it in the description below. It's basically, I mean, if you like the content we make at Today I Found Out, then Carl has written a bunch of those articles. You probably see his name in the credits on plenty of these. So definitely go check it out, because you'll like his stuff as well. It's a little bit more laid back than this, but uh, I, I really think you dig it. So there'll be a link in the description below. And also, I mean, if you just search YouTube for Fact Fiend, you will find it. And thank you very much for watching.